it was some, something that you may know about uh, Robert or not. He's also a lifetime member of our club. He was on the board for... He was on the board for 11 years. He's uh, been around the club for a long time. Uh, Robert, is your mic working? Yes. Oh, yes. I, okay, I turn it over to you. And How do I turn this down? down? Is there a volume control? Yeah, okay. Can, can you okay. hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. good. Uh, good morning, boys and girls. Now we can. <laughs> My name's Robert Whitworth. Um, I, um, uh, this is what I do, or what I have done. Um, we're just going to kind of start this off. Um, when I was in eighth grade, 13 years old, and what year was that? 62, 1962. I turned a magnolia and walnut ketchup. And amazingly enough, my, my mother kept it, and then I inherited it back. Um, and so it's, I believe, my oldest possession. <laughs> um, let's see, going on in 1967, uh, my father had a gas station, and I worked there. A fellow came in with a wood lathe in the back of the truck, and I says, I want it. And he goes, no. So I said, well, when you get hard up for money, come and see me. So the next day, he came back. <laughs> he, he, this, he was a teenager. I was uh, 17. And, uh, and actually, he was like 21. And he enjoyed uh, spirits. And so uh, we haggled back and forth, and I paid $75 for a 1236 Rockwell wood lighter. Um, in, from 1967 to 1997, I turned approximately five pieces. <laughs> this being the lone survivor. Uh, it, Lord knows what it is. But, <laughs> um, the, so, but it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a memory. Um, the, uh, in 1997, I was uh, reading in a fine woodworking magazine, and there was an advertisement for Japan Woodworker that showed a one-way spanner scroll chuck. Well, they're right over in Alameda. I live in Martinez. I went over there and purchased one of these. I had, um, I'm going to jump around here a little bit. In the mid-90s, my wife and I, we, we started going to garage sales, and then we graduated to estate sales. <laughs> we were at a estate sale in Orinda, and I walked down this driveway, and there were these black garbage bags. And I started looking in them, and there was all of this. I'd never seen this kind of wood before. I later found that it was exotic hardwoods, little oddball pieces, but lots of them. I walked over to the gal that was running the estate sale. I go, well, how much are these? She goes, those are garbage. <laughs> I said, well, can I have? Well, sure. Well, I loved all those bags. <laughs> and uh, it actually had his, the, her father's kind of life history of uh, woods, and he had uh, uh, notebooks, and it was great reading. Uh, and it introduced me to a lot of exotic hardwoods. When I my gripe, and one of the reasons I only turned those five pieces all that time was because you had to take a face plate, and it, it, I had a lousy face plate, and you had to screw something to it, or glue it, and wait, uh, and then with with the green wood, you, you shape it, and then you have to wait, and I don't like to wait. Um, 
So the, the exotic hardwoods allowed me, and the chuck allowed me to take a piece of wood, put it in the chuck, and turn and polish. And I, within an hour, I could have a finished goblet or whatever. Um, this is uh, what started all this. The first 97 and 98, I turned just lots of pieces. Uh, uh, my uh, imagination went wild. In 99, and I also got into turning, uh, I thought I wanted to turn big pieces. And this was uh, before stabilized hollowing systems. Um, this is, they, they tell me they still use these things. Yep. They should be illegal. <laughs> in the summer, in the summer, in the winter of 1999, I was turning, I had a, one of those things that, but I had bought this big chunk of uh, walnut burl, uh, weighed like 140 pounds. And so I turned, I, I was actually, uh, we have to do this one first. So I turned this out of that walnut, walnut pearl. I cheated, right? I made a bigger hole there to get the stuff out. And I did it with the arm brace and various cutting tools. Um, and so uh, then that, like I said, this was done in the, oh, this actually has a date. 7.99, so July of 99. That winter, I guess I was feeling, yeah, it's my urn, <laughs> where I'm gonna be eventually. Uh, it was 39 degrees in my 10 metal warehouse. And I was turning this, and I had a major catch. And it pulled this small rib. Lord knows where it pulled it, but it pulled it to the point where uh, you could only take very shallow breaths. And uh, uh, I thought, well, that's it. I'm not, I can't turn anymore. I had a friend of mine that I was he called and I was whining and uh, he says, well, turn miniatures. Well, okay, miniatures, the larger pieces, and if you turn them, you know, tax you physically. Turning little pieces taxes your brain more than it does your body. The hardest part is to hold the tool still enough um, and practice. You know, you can you can blow up all you want, and you're not going to cost yourself very much money. Um, we got the camera here because we're going. Let's see if we if we if we've done this. We got to the point. Well, I need actually over here. You know these. I I, uh, I got into um, bleaching two-part bleaching, this is uh, maple burl. And, and this piece just turned out this way, but you know, anybody recognize this? Anybody Kool -Aid. ever drink Kool-Aid? Kool -Aid. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. this is the Kool-Aid man from down under and not Australia, <laughs> or New Zealand. Um, I, I have, um, fun. I, uh, all my pieces are, even if some of them are a tremendous amount of physical work, um, I have fun doing this stuff. Um, so chronologically, those were the pieces done with the arm brace. Uh, now we have to move 
to the miniatures, and I'm going to need my wife to help. Um, because I had this rib, the ribs do not get well fast. Um, but I could turn. You could just. I have to tell you that during the interim here, I acquired a 2436 one way lake. And all of these pieces were turned on that big lake. Because you require a large lathe to turn large pieces, but a large lathe will also turn miniature pieces. Uh, they just ask people, well, isn't that a waste? And, and for a lot of years, it was not. Um, where are we sitting? I'm in the way. So, this is just a series. I, I, I do pieces in series. Uh, I start and, and I do, uh, I was really enamored with goblins. Uh, and then we had Stuart, Stuart Batty um, in to demonstrate, and that's what that was. I went and made one of these long stem trembler things. And I only needed to make one of those. <laughs> but the. Sorry. Oh, yes. Should we go to captive rings? Uh, I was making, I can't pick them up. She quaked them down. Oh, but there's, this is a piece of uh, palm with a captive ring. This is a piece of uh, soapstone with dendrites with two captive rings. And this is this is a cheat. This is one that I actually turned the rings, made the stem of the goblet, put the rings on, and then uh, put the <laughs> top of the goblet. You got to put the periodicity in this. Can't hear you. Okay. Uh, either I'm lo loud enough or too loud. Is that? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. You guys got to tell me these things. I I don't know. So anyway, the and then. Uh, I turned a very small goblet and I showed it to a friend of mine and he goes, well now next month bring it with the captive ring. <laughs> so Tawanut. Um, and these are very early and crude, but it's a goblet with, with a captive Draw. ring. That's, the cross section is not round. That's where I ended up getting to these pieces to show a, a round captive ring. Um, let's see, let's take a jump over to the nested boxes. Um, I made this series of nested boxes, but when I got down to the last one, the shape, I totally lost the shape, and I was uh, disgusted. So I ended up making a more miniature set <laughs> that... Was it nested? Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah, and the, this, you, I can't do it. I shake too much. Uh, How do we... Yeah. Well, yeah. Move the square on in front. Off the yeah. side so you can see it. Hey, the other one has to go out first. Huh. Yeah, it has to go inside down. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 see, I just throw them on the floor. <laughs> there it all sets together. So, so I was happy. Sorry. I was, I was very happy with the proportion of that, and even though I didn't get as many. Um, nesting. Um, that that actually needs to stay there because okay. you're going to do something. Oh, yeah. boy. I figured. Uh, <laughs> so 
So now we're going to show you the small pieces. <laughs> and now, you, now you're going to show us the small pieces. That's what he said. <laughs> and th this is my smallest box. Uh, it's, a box. Yeah, it's a beaded box. So. Oh yeah, he's okay. I just thought you could set it on that. That's what you want to set it on top of that. And then it's a tulip. A tulip. This is a tulip goblet. I, I, I'm enamored with tulips uh, and the shape. Uh, and uh, this one has a captive. Yes. And this is made out of ironwood. Somebody was asking me if I did something out of ironwood, but that oh that is out of ironwood with a captive ring on it. Uh, I actually owned and I made a uh, one out of. Coco Bola, a very dense Coco Bola with two captive rings. And I was showing it to someone in my hand. It fell out of my hand into a shag carpet. Oh, no. <laughs> I looked for an hour. Oh. It just ate it. So, so, I, so I went and. Uh, Question, Robert? Can you just pop up? Tooling you use to make these very miniature pieces? Yes. I knew I knew somebody was going to ask that. Very crude and rudimentary. Uh, you use, uh, I have gouges down to 330 seconds. Uh, and I used it, but mainly uh, to do the, uh, this is, I couldn't find a smaller when I own it, but this is um, a bead making tool. It's just, you just grind that angle and it's a bead or a cove. Uh, and can you see uh, that? There's a little bit. Uh, put, put, put it on that. Okay, okay. Here, you said that. I can't do it. But it has to be a game writer. You won't see the boat that way. Uh, oh, there you go. There you go. Okay, you see that? That's piano work. The the it's simple. It's really simple to put that in there and bend a little in. The hard part comes when you have to see it to be able to sharpen it. <laughs> you you can just sharpen it away. Yeah. Bend it again. Sharpen it again. Again and again until you get. Something and that—that's how you you go under for for the captive range. You undercut and you shape with the oil gouge to get a round cross section, and then you make one and then you tape it to the to the bowl of the goblet to, to, to do the next. Uh, and it, this is another one for one of the larger uh, rings, but there. Really simple stuff. The, the hardest part is to have a big enough magnifying glass so you can see what you're doing. And I have for years, and if anybody knows, uh, I have been on a search for a adjustable magnifying, a five or eight inch magnifier, a lighted magnifier that has an adjustable. I've never found one, and I've studied, and I don't know, it, it got a microscope, right? But that doesn't work either. Uh, but anyway, the, the key is, is to try to be able to see what you're doing. Uh, and when we talked about miniatures, they said, well, do miniatures. Well, what, what, what does a miniature mean? Well, when you saw those little tiny pieces, that's what my, what miniature means to me. <laughs> That's as small it, to date as I can make it. Um, <clears throat> I had a tremendous enjoyment in making these pieces. I did, we could actually talk about the, uh, okay. this is uh, off-center turning. And this is the queen of the pop belly goblets. And there's the king. And these are their subjects. 
of uh, chess. <coughs> This one, the subject came all the way from Japan. Um, that was that was uh, one of those design opportunities. The goblet that was there decided just to part ways with it, and I had this. Uh, this is an authentic, I don't know, geisha girl head from Japan, and it just seemed to work. Um, we were at a uh, uh, antique store in Martinez, and they had this, I don't know what it was, uh, some kind of, a, almost like a button. And I, it's, I imagine it's made out of uh, some type of palm nut, but I uh, bought it and I made it a hollow vessel. Uh, there again, opportunity to find materials to make things. Uh, uh, palm nuts. Um, I'm going to get in the way of them. Uh, you know. So, let's see. Yeah, we're, we're kind of done here. The only thing I was going to show is these two Christmas ornaments. And then I think we'll go back over there to the other Christmas ornaments. Um, miniature again. Uh, Scaling down in size, and the, and the same hand is is going up in size, and keeping proportion uh, is probably my biggest challenge. Uh, everything, and I I put tremendous effort into um, having a pleasing proportion to my eye, and a good part of the time, when people tend to enjoy. That uh, every now and then I get pointed out, say you could have done better. <laughs> oh, I knew it before you did. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Is that smallest Christmas ornament. How in the world do you? How in the world do you chuck it up or hold it so that? Um, you you have a sacrificial piece that you chuck. Your glue block. And, and then you glue a small block of whatever your material is going to be in. You know, there's three pieces. And uh, so you turn, I would turn my lathe into reverse. I'm right-handed. And, and turning downhill on the, the normal side, I, I couldn't do it. I turned reverse and lock the chuck and go on the other side of the lathe so I could turn it downhill this way. Uh, some of them, not these, you get over there. Uh, you had to, it was a fellow, this guy, Stuart Batty, used these little blocks that you would fasten clamp to your lathe and then have a little round in it and and a uh, where is it? Um, fishing line to hold to stabilize oh, the extension so that you would you would turn the end. You have to turn from the point and turn a little piece and finish it and then stabilize that and turn the next little piece and finish it. And so you, you can't, once you finish a piece, once you get thin enough and you finish it, you can't go back. So you have to get your proportions right as you go. Uh, I used to save all of my failures. So I have too many, <laughs> and, and then they just got lost. I've been in my shop for 34 years, and there's some. But uh, I, I did say I saved most of my failures, and, and like I said, there, it, it just ha if you, I want a certain thing, and if I don't get it, I I mope. <laughs> and I throw it away and I go and I think about it 
and then I go back for another round. And I would do that until I got what I wanted. And uh, it, it, it's a process. I'm sure all of you go through it one form or another. Uh, my favorite word is persistence because I have this much talent somewhere, but I have, and, and, and I know about proportion and numbers, uh, and I have a good feel, but um, persistence will get you further than any of that stuff. Well, you need the tools, too. You have to have the tools. Fingernails don't work as gouges. Um, I think we're that kind of takes care of this table. Uh, I guess I could have it. Does anybody have a question about this? I, I have a question about the little hollow form next to your tool, the one with the design on it that looks... This one? Yeah, it looks like a segmented piece. I didn't make this. I bought this. <laughs> there was a fellow on eBay, and this is this is called. Oh man, there's that word. It's hiding from me. What's the name? Uh, it's segmented, but it is a no. It's not a natural. It's not a. a Loud. Somebody had the word. It's a tessellation. Pardon? Tessellation. It's like repeating fingers. Yeah, it's my head, but it doesn't repeat. Okay. It's a un, un something segmented turning. Uh, I actually was able to recreate his work. I had to buy this so I could see it. I could, couldn't see it on the pictures on eBay. And uh, I paid $30 for that. It's one of his less expensive pieces. Um, and uh, which I, I'll eventually think of the word. But there, it doesn't, the pattern doesn't repeat. There's no repeating in the pattern. And you can sit and look at this for, uh, I've looked there for hours. And, and I have wasted more wood in saw cuts. I start out with blocks like this big of, of, of glued together blocks and I found the other day I have a little block like that uh, left of that material and I am going to actually go back and turn it. Uh, so yeah, that was, uh, I was very enamored with his work. Uh, that's the only thing I've heard that you didn't think. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, so on this table, this is the one I didn't. I didn't make the head of this here. No one we know that. We, uh, we, uh, you know, we, we didn't really get into, there again, uh, tawa nut. There, there's multiple kinds of tawa nuts. Uh, they, they, the most normal is this one, where it's just a beige kind of. But there's this one that has all these Interesting. Where are we going? The icicles. Hmm? The icicles. Are we going to the icicles? Yeah, that's about the right chronology. What am I doing with this? Oh. Two. Yeah. yeah. Um, in somewhere in the early 2000s, we had Bob Roseanne um, as a demonstrator, and he made uh, bird, uh, little bird houses, and he made Christmas ornaments. And so, Bob, no. Bob Roseanne. Bob Roseanne. Lives back east. He was on the AAW board for quite a few years. Great guy. Great guy. Um, we, uh, when I saw that he, you know, I knew he was new, I looked at his work online. And so I uh, 
turned a Christmas ornament. This is not the first one, but it looks just like it. I actually left it at home. Uh, so I made one like this, uh, and I'm going to have a problem here. What's the matter? Put it back on, yeah. Yeah, I'll just turn it around next time. Oh, it's okay. Uh, so, my second ever turned uh, Christmas ornament was this double double sphere. Uh, I like that, and I. This, there again, I do things in series. I, I keep turning, I keep getting different ideas, and I keep turning. Uh, and these actually led to those miniatures over there uh, because I wanted to see how small I could get them. Um, there is uh, lignum vita, bloodwood, um, maple burl. African blackwood, uh, ebony. Um, this is um, soapstone, Montana soapstone with dendrites, which look like flowers. Um, there again. When you turn soapstone, you're you're just scraping, and yes, and you get really dusty, right? You can act like you're using a gouge. But the gouge is doing nothing but scraping. So you, you have a very sharp, fine edge to it. And yes, powder that uh, you need to wear a breathing protection. Uh, I, I was in my shop, I built a, uh, a barrier tent around my leg to keep huh. the dust. Because you put it on this kind of floor, which my shop has. And, just go sliding and it's kind of neat when I can actually slide around on it, you know. And I was quite a bit younger, then. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was it was hard to contain the dust. So there are again a series of pieces to the point where I got tired of cleaning up. Um, but I I, I I really liked the look of it. Um, so so this was kind of my I, I have. Larger, I made one very large um, Christmas ornament out of uh, carrot wood. You cut down a tree, and I got a big piece of carrot, which is uh, really nice. But um, we're going to move on here. Um, we're going to come up to a point where there was the arm brace, and then in the early. 2000, in fact, around 2000, we started to see stabilized hollowing systems. And that's when all of a sudden, I could, with my bad rib, I could use a stabilized hollowing system and not be under stress. Um, there was a project that well, the city of Walnut Creek cut down a big oak tree and they called Gary Wood Turners and some woodworking groups and we went out there and harvested the wood and this hollow form came from that tree and according to the powers that be that, that tree had been planted in 1492. That kind of sounds Pinky, but it's old, really old, um, and uh, was a, a challenge for me to turn and let me know that I wouldn't be turning any more pieces of that size. Uh, it just, I, I don't uh, have the stature for it, but I was, I, I enjoyed it. I will show you, you know, the outside looks pretty even and nice. It, it's old. But I, I had to really work hard <laughs> to call it that. Mother Nature did that. Am I doing that? I'm saying you're doing that. Sounds like what it's supposed to do. 
I uh, actually tried to fill the cracks and it made it worse, ugly. And so I finally just uh, left it, yes, because it was fairly thin. Could be a bomb. <laughs> This was out of a different oak tree, Lord knows. But there again, uh, uh, I have a affinity for balloons and the shape of balloons. Um, they, I, I tend to um, start out with making something and it turns into that shape. <laughs> uh, um, the, uh, So as we go along, you know, these, uh, um, this was wood, I was one of the wood raffles, and uh, I never finished that before finishing bottoms, and uh, that was with the insert. Does this thing have to be done all the time? Okay, maybe like that. Um, someone we had, that showed us the Queen's crown, uh, and I was very enamored with that. Uh, and I've always loved uh, maple burl, a uh, burl particularly. I, you just sit there and look at it, you know. Kind of, you don't need drugs. <laughs> you just get lost looking at that. Um, but. And these were all done with the stabilized system. You say it's this thing has been sitting in a bucket for uh, 18 years. And I just keep it around to remind me what I did to myself with it. Um, we have, in Martinez, there's a, a, was a company that cut down trees. And, I somehow met the fellow who owned the company and he goes, well, well, I have some burl and have no clue what kind of burl it is, but uh, very hard, very hard. Uh, wood turning is, is actually, I think, is in, in this form is meant to be touched. The, the tactile feeling Touching this stuff uh, is uh, pleasing. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, one step back, uh, uh, I had an acquaintance who was a wood worker and made fabulous furniture. Uh, and it was again, you could touch it. It just made it, it made you feel good. And and so one day we were visiting and. And I asked him, well, well, how did you do this? And he looked at me with confusion. And he goes, I can't tell you that. That's a secret. <laughs> I was disgusted. <laughs> More than disgusted. I will not, I've been really good and not saying bad words. So, when I, I, I I knew about the wood turners for probably a year to two years, and I finally decided to go visit. And I was hoodwinked so fast into giving up my 40 bucks <laughs> that it has, my head spun. But I found out that when you ask a wood turner, how did you do this? You better be ready to spend some time. <laughs> and that. <coughs> That set very well with me. Uh, I will tell you something right now. If we get all done with this. And if you have any questions we can't get to or uh, how to's or stuff, um, I'm available and I like to talk. And I like to, to show, you know, this is nothing but showing off. And I like it. I don't do it very often, but I, I am, probably too willing to share. So I just wanted you to know that. We, what time is it? 11 o'clock. Okay, I have to move on, don't I? Yeah. Uh, 
the uh, my in-laws lived up in Dallas, Oregon, and this is a piece of wood off the property, and it's oak from Oregon, and it's just a, a, a spaceship. Yeah. Uh, but back to the balloon thing. Growing up, we were not poor. We were not well off. We were somewhere in between. My father uh, was the operator of a gas station. Uh, didn't own the, the business, but an operator. He was an owner, operator, not an owner, he was an operator. He worked really hard. Uh, he provided. But we didn't have a set of encyclopedias. We were given a set of encyclopedias. It was missing the S. <laughs> so it, we didn't have the internet, and they had sold the TV because we argued about it. Had three brothers and sisters. <laughs> they got tired of the arguments, come home from school in seventh grade, with TV errors, running in the house, no TV. Um, so you look through the encyclopedias. In the encyclopedias, it says, showed a Chinese fellow and it showed a hot air balloon floating away and said this is the first hot air balloon in history. If I had that book, I could show you the picture and this is the shape. And there again, just like there, there's this is closer to the shape that was in the book than any of my pieces, but um, I did do a smaller version, uh, and they're very thin, touchy feel. Um, so let's see. You know, you guys, I get notifications of wood alerts and stuff. Well, we, way back when, I got a notification for a wood alert in Lafayette and went over and it, it, that day had just been cut down and it was rotting. It was a spalted pepperwood tree. And they are just, they're like palm with almost how much water is in them. Uh, so I took a piece back to my shop and I wondered, I was into this sagging and stuff. And uh, so, you say, I had to turn, the, the, this particular piece was turned very fast because as it was turning, it was moving and spitting water out. Uh, it didn't have the base. The base got actually added later because I wanted to elevate it. Uh, and we had somebody around that was coming through that talked about piercing to hide imperfections. This material tears itself as it dries. I made four or five of these. This is the only one that not, didn't destroy itself in the process of drying. I did manage to get real thin, uh, and this is fairly thin. Uh, but it was fun, it was fun. Uh, Robert, can we take a, like a five minute break or so? Sure. I just be nice. Five or ten minutes. Yeah. You can drink the water. Restrooms, and we will reconvene. And well, we can get out of the picture. Jim <coughs> Rogers. Turn my hat on. Yeah, I can turn it on. Okay. <laughs> Jim Rogers bullied me into making <laughs> a segmented bowl. <laughs> I never did it. I made the segments. I made the segments, and uh, they were laying there for four or five years, and I'd see them every time I went to my lake, which was quite often. One day, I looked at that segmented ring, and I saw a wheel. Uh, I didn't use that segmented ring, but I made a wheel. This is a very clunky, to me, it's clunky, uh, <laughs> but it was a wheel. And I love emotion. Um, so this is 116th solid brass rod. This one, this one. 
and it's just a wheel, and I drilled holes through and shoved the, the wires through into a hub. And, uh, but, but it was something that would inspiration. It, it, I could see possibilities. Those rings were made out of lace wood. They became the wheels on the tricycle. Uh, there again, they're, they're drilled through, and, and when you get a chance, look at the wheels, and they, the holes are putty, but they match really well. Um, the process of making this was all because I wanted to see motion. Uh, we had to take one little step back. When I made all the bugs, uh, we had a member who since passed, but he was a scientist for the life of me. Somebody here knows his name. Uh, but he would give me grief every time I would bring one of the bugs <laughs> in. <laughs> he would say, Robert, where's the switch? He says, no, you nano. You know, but, but there again, it was, it was, when I am criticized, it actually helped push me into other avenues and uh, uh, unless you say really bad stuff. <laughs> so he actually helped move me along and the wheel thing and if it wasn't for Jim Rogers and the segmented mold that never got made, uh, I wouldn't have the wheels. So there's a uh, process, I'm in the way. Yeah, I'll get on the other side. Okay. You, you can make uh, the, the subject, but without being able to put something to it to make it move, it's just still static. So I call these things power bases. Um, there is uh, There's a gear motor, there's an electronic timer, which I need, very proud of that. And this one actually runs on two 9-volt batteries. Uh, has an on-off switch because if it, I didn't have an on-off switch on the first one, and the electronics will drain the batteries. So when I went to show it off, and I pushed the switch, <laughs> nothing happened. And so I ended up putting an a on-off switch to shut everything off. So and then a little light shows you it's on because, and then very simply, he, uh, <laughs> and, and, well, I'm not going to go here. I did the head as a joke, and when my wife saw it, she started laughing. And I thought, you can't get any better than that. And she told me to leave, because I was going to try to make it more realistic. So, needless to say, once this was finished, well, what do I do next? And uh, some blurb came on TV showing um, Ben-Hur. <laughs> oh, the, and the, the chariots and stuff. Well, I couldn't make a bunch of horses. I'm sorry. I could get one. And we're lucky to have one. Uh, if you could see how many layers of different putty type materials it took to finally get the horse's head. He spent about nine months of his early life as a duck. <laughs> but I'm not, I, I'm not a, uh, what do you call that, real life carver, you know, to make it. Um, but anyway, he, he managed. So this has the same setup, batteries and an electronic timer and a motor. And uh, 
Yeah, he was going to turn on now. So, so I had to add, I wanted the arms to do this. I figured out how to do this, but to do this, you had to, it's an engineering thing with split shafts. Um, we can, uh, sometime, if we can get the camera, we'll pop the top off and you can see the inner working. This one has a cam, a double cam underneath that pushes on a rod. It goes up in here, pushes on a split shaft that does this, and then in turn, he, uh, this is his whip, and these are the reins, you know, and uh, I had lots of fun building this. What's more challenges? How do I do this? And uh, I found in this one, you, know, you see the, this section, this is a crankshaft. And by rediscovering crankshafts allowed me to move on to, I'm going to turn this off, These are both straight lines. They sit there and they move. There is movement. But they, after a very short time, they are bored. Uh, so I came up with this idea that how could I make a car that drove back and forth? And after some preliminary time, and then 1,500 hours in a year of my life. <laughs> and it's true, that's not a joke. Uh, I'll tell you this one part. After 500 hours of working on this, and pushing it on the floor, I had the basic... I didn't do that. <laughs> So after 500 hours, I made a mock-up base and was able to set just the bare bones car on it, put two wires together, and it went back and forth and didn't jump off and didn't destroy itself. And so then I had the privilege of putting another thousand hours into making all the rest of the pieces. Uh, we have headlights. Um, but here's what everybody, let's see, we're turning this on. The, before we do that, to everyone and everybody can come up and talk to me, feel, touch, um, until they say it's time to stop. Yes? Well, maybe, a, a, could you talk a little bit about how you set up the plywood pieces? Sure. Laid them out and how did you get the coloring and what were you using? Veneer. Okay, Car there, if you look, in each one, there's pieces of Baltic plywood because to, to which one? Even this one has eight inch Baltic plywood. I have another one. I guess it didn't get, I didn't bring it. But to get your thickness, to make you make a plank. Uh, I made a plank of six by twelve inch. Plank. Right, with one eighth inch Baltic plywood with veneers in between? Yes. And okay. you build, and then 
there was now this was the first one and it's all it's what half inch Baltic plywood with black veneer and uh, then of course then what, what do you do after that uh, I had made the, the molds and I had I built a uh, hydraulic press just for this, to be able to press. You, you put a box of uh, MDF, I made a box of MDF that had Formica uh, on it, okay? And use wax paper to line it, and then uh, you glue. I created this thing with two paint rollers and an electric drill uh, that had a reservoir of glue, and you'd feed the sheets of uh, oh veneer through and glue both sides at once and you would take them from there and put them into this box they were pre-sized cut and put them into the mold box and you'd sit there and you had to do this fairly fast I finally bought some glue that had a lower uh, dry time on it uh, veneer glue um, and because you had to get the glue on the complete surface because of my early ones that I tried to just paint glue on, uh, they would delaminate on you. Uh, so, okay, so you just take different colors of veneers and, uh, and, then, and then, like this one, you take it and cut sections and then glue them back together uh, and then turn them and it uh, was fun. Uh, uh, the drill holes, you know, uh, and uh, different directions. I, I played with putting together different directions. Uh, you see that? Th this is my favorite. And I have spent many hours trying to figure out how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> because I really, really like it. In fact, you, you gotta pass it around and look at it. It's, there's subtleties to it. That, uh, and, and you say this that one. My favorite. This is yeah. this is fun. Uh, I, I had to make up a couple of those planks, uh, and there is uh, this one has. It looks like five sixteenths uh, Baltic birch plywood in it, uh, and then lots and lots and lots of veneer. Lots and of then, uh, that's Ben Franklin, if you didn't know. <laughs> You know how you see things and go, oh, I know what that is. Uh, so, uh, and then square bowls, you know, and, and making another plank. And, uh, and square bowls, and um, I have this, I had a 3 by 12 by 4 foot piece of Coco Bola. Wow. And uh, I still have a piece this size. You hoard this size of wood, but, but the square edge bowls, uh, I, I, it, uh, the process of doing different shapes and the challenges of, uh, with, especially with these, uh, with keeping your digits, to <laughs> learn not to get in the way of the invisible edge. <laughs> Anybody got another question I can answer up here before you come up? Yes. How do you register the spokes on the hub and the wheel? Um, on my 2436 one way, you had 48 uh, indexing. And so I would put a nylon washer uh, on the chuck, between the chuck and the lathe and I would snug it up, and I would do 48 holes. And uh, you touch like the drill to the <coughs> banjo or something, or how do you? Yeah, I took a, a Dremel and I built, I, I purchased a XY small XY table, mm -hmm. adjustable, so you can crank it this way, and this would be like a milling machine. And I put a Dremel on a linear slide. Many of slides are neat. Uh, and that, and, and put a post on it, and that's what's set into the, the banjo. 
and to get it centered. And then you would, I got to where I could use my hand and pop up the keeper and move it one thing and push it back down and push this in. Because there's 96 spokes <laughs> oh my God. in these. Uh, these only have 48. This has 96 in now. Um, it, it, the effect you get, you know, 48 to 96 is way of difference. And these, these cross. Uh, so you do 48 on one side, 48 on the other side. But it's, you get to that 48 and you take the um, chuck and you tighten it half between the two holes. Uh, so that then you can get the next set of holes, 48, that's offset from the first 48. It's one of those things, process you go through, what do you want? And this is what I want. Uh, because I, the, the evolution from, from one piece to the next uh, was uh, big. That's a better word for it. But, but, but the, the changes I had to go through uh, engineering-wise to come up with these movements. Uh, the ped he pedals this, and this comes from the crankshaft back here, all the way here, up into this, where there's a split shaft inside of there. And that causes him to his feet to go back and forth and walk. The, the crankshaft pieces, I have at least 20 to 30 failures. And I don't, I have them where I can see them. Because, and, and there were only failures because I had to go through that process to get to the ones that would work. Uh, I had many that, that you put together and it just, it, it, you have binding and things like that. And uh, um, if you have enough persistence, and I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you finish your presentation, would you go back and talk about the about the animals and the articulated joints? Yeah, we, we I, I call them my bugs uh, because um, when I first started, uh, I got this idea I wanted to do a bug, and so I made these three four pieces and I set at the table and and I had the bottle of glue and I was ready to glue them together and I go. No, uh, static, static, this is great, stuff like that is static, it has movement in the, the lines, but to glue something together uh, to end up with something that should move, it just, I couldn't do it. That led to um, these pieces here are wood pop beads. Uh, my, I, I made these beads that pop together. I took them home and showed them to my wife. And she goes, oh, you made wood pop beads. Now, I thought I was making something new. But uh, I was, uh, God, what year is that? 2000, somewhere around 2000. I was standing in line at uh, Best Buy returning something and they had this TV screen and they had a bug's life. And the female spider comes walking across. And the, that instant led me to be able to see making this shoulder joint. Um, and if you, I don't know if you noticed, but this shoulder joint repeats itself on this uh, this is the chipmunk scorpion from down under. Uh, this is Spike the spider. Uh, the, oh, this is Roscoe the two-legged dog, <laughs> who was my, he was the first. Uh, 
and he can't stand up with that quick. Uh, but there is multiple different sizes of ball joints that are, they just snap These together. These are all wooden ball joints that snap together? Yes. Holy you, cow. You, you, um, I thought it was I, I learned about digital calipers back then from Harbor Freight. And the, the opening in the socket, and the socket has to be not just a drilled hole, it has to be drilled and then opened up inside. And it has to be five to eight thousand smaller, the hole does, than the size of the ball. And you, you wax up the ball and pop it through there and hope it doesn't split. <laughs> because there was a lot of those too. And then there were ones that you push it in and just fall right out. <laughs> so you made another one. And, but, but it was, uh, uh, you know, I, I won best of show in one year at, at the Christmas party for this guy. And uh, I was, uh, I'm still proud about that. Um, and the, the joints, this one particular one, the joints have held up. Uh, this crab here, he's on a stand because he just splays. If you, uh, if you move this arm, might as well show, which it won't do it now, huh? And it's holding together. And most of the time, it just falls over apart. Uh, and this is, if you, this is pink ivory. And of course, there again, when I get done with him, it's this, his name is Pincus de Burger. <laughs> and there again, my wife and her doll making with the eyes, you know, and they're in ball joints. Uh, you can, and I like, you know, posing. Oh, there it went. <laughs> Poor like guy. He, he the, has uh, lost that arm so many times. Um, Actually, zoom in on the, uh, yeah, there you go. That, I didn't realize the ball joint. That makes yeah. it even harder. And inside, inside there, can you see that? <clears throat> yeah, I can see it from there. That's the cartilage. That's 3M's non-woven buffing pad in white, which doesn't remove any material, it just polishes. But you have to, it acts as a, the car, a spring back. When you, you have to make the, the socket deeper than the ball. Right. <coughs> or you just push it on there and just flop around. So you need something to push back. Um, you know, I never did do this. This has got to get passed around. Uh, the evolution went from, because the, the longevity, it, as the wood shrunk and things fell apart, I wanted something that would have longevity. So I created uh, an acrylic ball joint. Uh, and, uh, I didn't like them. Uh, they're plastic and it squeaks. And, uh, so, but, but Spike has uh, uh, acrylic ball joints. And uh, so we reached that point of evolution and that's when I, uh, and I can't tell you how it happened, but uh, I started making brass cartridge ball joints with spun that there's, you spin the metal where it overlaps the ball. You have to thread and thread the ball. I, I, there was a fellow on eBay called E Spears, and I uh, emailed him and I says, I'd like to buy some brass spears. And uh, he says, Well, what do you need? And I says, You know, five of these, five of these. He sent me a, a, like an eight pound box from oh. <laughs> eighth inch to half inch and every size in between. I still am using uh, There's one on the end of that, <laughs> that piece right there that I dug out the box and put on. Uh, I actually used a steel ball. And by the way, that steel ball, I tried to drill it and it just laughed at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to anneal it. I had to make it red hot and then let it cool at its own rate, and then I could drill it. 
And I did not thread it, I just used thread locker to hold that shaft in there. Um, these have longevity. Um, this, um, you, can, you can put his arms where you want them and they stay. There's, there is one eighth inch ball joint cartridges. And when you get down to one eighth, the screw that goes in is a zero AD screw. I didn't know they existed. I knew about 172s. But when you drill a 1 8 inch spear and you thread it with a 172, you know, it looks like a tree for a toothpick. And, uh, but so I had to, I, I go, well, God, somebody must make a smaller screw. Well, they did. And, uh, and then you get the taps and the drills. And, uh, oh, God. And you, you have to just be gentle. <laughs> because if you're, if you're just just a hair ungendered, you just snap. <laughs> but you, so this has got the brass uh, cartridges. cartridges. Yes, uh, and then in here, there's uh, now the shoulder joints are back to the a bug's life, and there this joint, this joint, or just the the pop together wood. Uh, this is African black wood and this is blood wood. This is snake wood. Uh, snake wood is here. I was, I'm very enamored with snake wood. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, uh, the, uh, yeah. And sometimes the joints, it does twist, but it doesn't right now. Um, but there, the head will go up and down. He could nod his head. Uh, <laughs> This was made, you're not going to tell me. She's <laughs> keeping it secret from me. Um, probably 2004, five, And so the longevity of the joints has lasted quite a while. Um, the, um, uh, Robert? Yes. The, uh, these uh, pieces are unique and of a kind. Yes. Uh, which you would never want to give up, but has a no. I, I am I, I am saleable. <laughs> <laughs> Everything has its price. There's peace here if you would like. <laughs> no. Has has a museum ever approached you? No. That's a shame. Uh, yeah, I've been told that, but you know, I tried at one time to enlarge myself out into the nether and uh, I'm just a rubber band you know I kind of spring back I did a Facebook page I have a Facebook page I never answer it <laughs> <laughs> I never look at it I uh, I just I, there's something that I don't have that is required to do that I have a YouTube page with with uh, my cars and uh, my, I do kinetic wind art, um, and it's on there. Uh, Robert's art, you, you may be able to find it, you may not. It's on there, but YouTube is strange. Um, so the, um, uh, this is later, the, I, it's got the, the eight inch cartridges in it. Oh, I'm doing this again, huh? Uh, and uh, it's kind of stiff. The upper ones are stiff, but the I did this thing. Uh, I wanted. He's got a a bearing for his head, and he was supposed to be a spinning top. But the bearing. But there's a hidden. There's there's something hidden here. Uh, does, did anybody see what's hiding in this? Oh come on! Somebody saw it. Like the box. Or I'm actually good. What's that? Is there a box? No, no box. All right. Has anybody ever heard of yin and yang? Oh. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. there. It's in the shape between these two pieces. You see that? Yeah. 
Okay. You, you see the way those two pieces are shaped and are put together? I tell you, that was fun. <laughs> I love I love challenges, but I sure love when they're over and successful. <laughs> um, the, uh, does anybody read science fiction? Oh yeah. Um, remember, remember reading a story? I'm pretty sure it was by Robert Heinlein about the alien culture that were called the Rollers. No, it was an obscure word. <laughs> it was about these beings that instead of feet, they had a big sphere that was part of their lower body that that's what they went around on. And so the idea of a sphere being used as a wheel. Um, and then I always spoke to me. And uh, toy horses and wheels, or wheels. And, uh, actually has a ball joint in his neck. Um, uh, googly eyes. And there's a uh, palm and uh, real ivory. <laughs> and so, you know, it, they're in motion. And then we get to the way my brain keeps. It, it, we won't talk about that either. <laughs> um, this is, I name my pieces, and I'm going to spell the name, the first part of it. It's W H Y, Y, N O, there's Y, a dash, N O, a dash, woman. And, and because I can't say Y N O woman. And, uh, but she has a, a bottle of wine going into her own goblet, holding a miniaturized version of herself doing the same thing, and then you have to use your imagination that this just keeps going uh, forever. And uh, uh, it, it, it happened because I was looking in a mirror, and there was a mirror behind me, <coughs> and I could see you can't see the end. And that's where the inspiration for, for that came from. Um, and uh, can we do, can we do the talk? I don't know if I can do it at all. Come on, let's do it. Come on. You said you'd do it. No, I didn't. <laughs> my, my granddaughter was supposed to come and do this. Uh, She's got I physically, my body won't make this work. My wife is uh, Sometimes can make much work, more not talented. <laughs> Give me an hour, a few minutes of practice. Oh, we got to get rid of that. That's just stand to hold it. Let's see if I can do it right. No. Oh, it's not gonna do it. it popped out. Come on, pop out. There's another one that pops out. You gotta do it faster. I have to do it faster and just right, and it'll two of them pop out. When I pull on it, it just flies all over the room. Do it on the floor. Oh, no, it's hard no, to do that. Yeah. I can't get down there. <laughs> There's actually a temple in that, in that, old, that old. My our granddaughter and our son do it quite well, but she she's sick today. Uh, well, you, it won't work. What? Oh, if I'm doing it the wrong way? Yeah. You'll have to screw the handle. Yeah, you said that. Okay, I'm left. Robert, here, while she's setting that up, what was the inspiration for the three tops? Uh, it was an article in the. Uh, American Wood Turner. Uh, Japanese people came over from Japan and made, and a friend of mine called me and said, 
Okay, you have to wrap it to away from you. Okay. And that screw, I never glued it back in. I'll try it another time. It might, might not work. Yep. I tried to make a board first. Oh, it's hard to. Robert? Can we start closing it down and everybody, just maybe yeah. invite everybody up to take a look at your shirt? Sure. And sure. Yeah. Transmission. So, uh, Robert, before, before you all walk up there, let's give Robert Ron. Really? So you can do it? I don't know. I know. It's, 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 it's not a course.